What's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. And today, we have a lot going on in the cryptocurrency market. I want to touch base on the things that are coming up this week. Throughout the weekend, really yesterday, the Bitcoin price popped above the 618 Fibonacci retracement level and closed the day above there. So we have now retraced most of the retracement levels. But as you guys know, we're coming up up to the big, big mamma jammas up in here. We have the 702 Fibonacci retracement right there at around 54,100, and then the 786 retracement up there around 57,100. Now, in the 2017-2018 bull run, the price of Bitcoin ran all the way up to about $20,000, had a large crash, retraced back to the 702 Fibonacci retracement level, and then went off into a multi-year bear market. So this level right here, of course, is always incredibly dangerous in my mind. It's even in the intros of my videos. You see it jumping around, getting to that 702 retracement, arrow breaks through, we go to the moon. But there's a reason why that level is so important. It's because it gets rejected so often. When we look back at that, 2017 bull run and see how it ran up you can see right in there that it did reject exactly at the 702 fibonacci retracement so we are coming up to that moment right now to see if we're going to get through there or if we're going to find some problems for ourselves right there right at about fifty four thousand one hundred dollars right there at the same time the total altcoin market cap has reached back up to just a mere hair below the all-time high let's measure that out and see how close we've gotten we've gotten 1.5 percent away from the all-time high for the total altcoin market cap and at the same time bitcoin has gotten about three and a half percent away from that 702 fibonacci retreat Basement. So it's a pretty big moment here in the cryptocurrency market. Now, there's something I want to talk about, and it has to do with the XRP price chart. First of all, today, XRP did pop above this August 15th price level. So that's awesome. If we take a look at this on a closer scale, you guys should be able to recognize this if you've been with this channel for a long time. What do you see happening here in this structure? And, you know, it's probably only if you've been with the channel for like four or five months and you've heard me say it a dozen times. If you've only heard it once, maybe not. But what do we have here? We have a crash. We have a retrace back into the retracement levels. We have reaccumulation. Then we come back up to the top, double tap, break out. So we're showing very classic structures of what these types of corrections and breakouts look like for the short term time frame. If this thing does continue to play out, that at least gets you out there to $2.30 sense for this move. But the reality is I'm not here to actually talk too much about this right now. I'm just kind of on alert right now with the market. As you know, being at that 702 retracement level for the Bitcoin price chart is going to keep me on edge until it gets broken through, if it does get broken through. But there's something that's happening in the Bitcoin community that has me a little concerned. And it has to do with the XRP price chart. And it has to do with what happened in the past, in particular, on this day right here. And I'll put us on an even shorter time frame here. I've got us on the one hour chart. So each candle represents one hour of time. But on February 1st, there was, I believe, a telegram group that got put together where everybody was planning on buying XRP at the same time. I did not participate in this. I did not promote it, but you could see what happened. At the exact buy time that everyone was supposed to buy XRP, you could see that the price actually ended up plummeting. And by the end of the day, it had actually lost 32% compared to what happened at the time that people were supposed to buy XRP at. Why did this happen? Why did the price of XRP fall at a time when everybody was supposed to buy? And it happens because everybody knew about it ahead of time. And as you can see, they front ran it. By the time the time came, what happened? Everybody had already bought and they sold it. And as you can see over here, Michael Saylor is promoting that same type of thing to happen with Bitcoin. And I'll read this to you really fast. On September 7th, which is tomorrow, El Salvador will officially begin using Bitcoin as its national currency alongside the US dollar. Every cyber hornet I know is planning to buy $30 in Bitcoin tomorrow in solidarity with the people of El Salvador and their leader. Will you join us? And so what we're watching is that same type of thing. And this hasn't been silent. This has actually been known about for at least a couple of days that I've seen it starting to kind of flutter around on Twitter. Whether or not this was going to grow into anything bigger, I didn't know. But obviously, now that Michael Saylor has started promoting it, clearly, 
the whole Bitcoin community knows they're all supposed to buy Bitcoin tomorrow. We've seen exactly what happens whenever there becomes a planned buy time. And especially if people know about it ahead of time because people front run it. And well, look at where they've organized all of this to happen at. Right back at the 702 Fibonacci retracement level. So they're convincing all retail investors to go buy Bitcoin tomorrow. Now there's certain things I can think about that, right? I could say, all right, maybe they're just trying to get enough liquidity and enough volume to break through the retracement levels. Or is there some type of group effort here where there's a plan to dump a ton of Bitcoin onto retail investors as we get back to the 702 retracement, create excitement and euphoria and extreme greed at the retracement level, just like what happened after the bubble popped for Bitcoin back in 2017 as it got back to the retracement level, extreme greed, euphoria, expecting the prices to break out much higher occurred. People bought the market at the retracement level and what happened? It turned over and crumbled on itself. And now Michael Saylor and his group of friends are all trying to get retail investors together as a group to buy the market together right here at the retracement level. How how lucky is that, right? I mean, if you watch this channel at all, we always talk about this retracement level. We always talk about how it's when retail investors become euphoric again. And then suddenly Michael Saylor and all these groups of people are all coming together to get retail investors all to buy at the exact same time as we get back to the retracement level. Something smells funny. If it doesn't smell funny to you, it should. Of course, I don't know what will happen. I can't predict the future <laughs> like a, a true magician. I can try to guess my best I can. And I don't know what will happen when we get back to that retracement level, if they're going to be creating enough liquidity or enough volume to break through the retracement levels on this first attempt, or if this is some really evil plan. I don't know. But if your smell dar isn't going off, that something smells funny here that we've gotten back to the retracement level and Michael Saylor and all these people are trying to get retail investors to buy at the retracement level. I don't know, man. It feels weird. And like I always say, I will never tell you what to do, but I'll try to do my best to show you what this market has done in the past. And what we know happened at the end of the 2017-2018 bull run is that Bitcoin fell with a big fall, retraced back to the 702 retracement, and euphoria returned, and then the market rolled over and went into a bear market. Your guess is as good as mine on whether or not Bitcoin is going to break through the 702 Fibonacci not to retracement level. I'm cheering for it and placing my bets that it's going to break through. It doesn't mean it's going to, because we've seen how the market reacts. Even in this most recent move that happened right back over here, that's precisely what happened to Bitcoin. It retraced to the 702 retracement, turned on itself, and plummeted. And what we know happened in 2017 and 2018, or at least I do because I was there, is that you retail investors, retail euphoria, all returned back into the similar retracement, getting back to the same level before it rolled over on itself, and that we're now getting back here again and these stats right here show you very clearly what side of the trade retail investors are going to be on. They're going to be on the buy side. I'm clearly not, but the herd is. And we all have to make our best educated guesses, right? So you kind of know how the past has played out. You know that it's retraced to 702. You know it's turned over on itself at 702. You know retail investors have gotten euphoric at that price level. And we have something very similar about to happen tomorrow or maybe even today. Now, I know what the comments are going to be. So blockchain backer, are you saying this? Blockchain backer, are you saying that? I'm not saying anything. I'm just showing you the data. It's up for you to determine what you're going to do. I am not saying anything more than Bitcoin is approaching the 702 Fibonacci retracement level. Historically, that has been a problem area and that Michael Saylor and Bitcoin enthusiasts are all planning to buy at the exact same time expecting prices to continue going higher at the 702 retracement level. The retail herd is all in the same group again. They were all terrified down here, expecting prices to break down much lower. They're all back to euphoria. They're all back into agreement. And they're all going to buy Bitcoin together again at the retracement level. It doesn't take trying to predict the future or to be right or to be wrong to merely say that's odd for all that to happen right here and for it all to be directed at retail investors, right? Not towards institutions, right? Institutions just bought quietly in the background. But hey, retail investors, 
all of you together. Let's all get together for a big movement. Let's be a part of something retail. Let's all buy together at the 702 retracement. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Who knows? Maybe it is going to give us what we're looking for. I keep talking about that. That's kind of what I expect. And then it's over for Bitcoin. Maybe this is going to give it that energy to get that final push. We'll see. Maybe it's a trap that's being laid for retail investors. I think either one of those are equally as likely. And really, like we talked about in yesterday's video, seeing some volatility in the altcoin market showing up here at this all-time high, which, you know, like we just said, we're only one and a half percent away from the all-time high. It makes sense for volatility to really start erupting up in here as we try to get through that all-time high. And I'm sure a lot of people would be sitting here saying, come on, blockchain backer, let's get all excited. Let's get all happy. You know, we got through that retracement level over the weekend. Boom, we just back tested it this morning. It's looking great, right? But if you've been following for the last couple of weeks, you've seen how nervous I've been watching a lot of these altcoins at the retracement levels. Bitcoin being at its retracement level, of course, is going to make me insanely nervous because of what happened in 2017. Bitcoin has to get through here to invalidate any type of repeating of what happened at the end of the cycle for Bitcoin in 2017 and 18. When the bubble popped, this is what it did. Big fall, back to the 702 retracement, turned over years of bear market. So we've got to get through here. Of course, I'm going to be nervous as we're back at the 702. And I don't really like seeing Michael Saylor pushing retail investors to buy at this price level, because as we've discussed over the last several months, is that retail investors get euphoric back at the retracement level. And we're going to watch that happen within the next 24 to 48 hours. So we've just kind of got to get through this moment so I can let my guard down a minute. And we have to see what is the whole plan here that these guys are up to, to have all these retail investors all buy at the exact same time. Are they trying to break through retracement levels? Or is this a planned dumpage on retail investors? And we've got to kind of let this moment in time pass us by and see what's going to happen here at these retracement levels, which, you know, if it looks like it's all just going to happen relatively soon, we'll see some type of reactions happening. But I don't forget of what happened with XRP on February 1st. There was a big telegram group. They were all planning on buying XRP at the same time. They all knew about it ahead of time. They all front ran it. And then the second, the time hit of when they were all supposed to buy together, what happened? It dumped like crazy, 35%, really fast. So while these conceptually sound like some good idea, hey, we're all going to buy together and then hidden behind like, hey, we're in solidarity. We're doing it as a, you know, to unite and to be part of something as a movement. The reality is it just creates a bunch of liquidity at these, these prices. I've always talked about how institutions will wait, right? Patient people will wait. Trade like professional investors, professional traders will not sell into the depths of despair of Bitcoin when the price is really low. They wait for the retracements. And then when they get back to the retracements, that's when they'll exit their positions. And what we're watching happening with Bitcoin right now is we're retracing back to the retracement levels. And now there's a concerted effort to get retail investors to provide buy liquidity at the retracement levels. Is it more than that? Is it to break through these retracement levels or is this to provide the opposite side of the trade so that the institutions can sell at the retracement levels and have, an, have a buyer on the other side? You get what I'm saying? Now, what's the positive thing going for us? We've been staring at this previous correction that Bitcoin did. Same exact structure before it ended up crumbling on itself right back here, back in September and October and November of last year. I've stretched this thing out to match this. You can see how even up in here, all of this is so insanely similar. And the fall that happened, all of these little things that happened in here, you can see even these right here just falling at the exact same. And you can see where we are right now. I mean, look at this. This is crazy. I mean, look at how precise this is, right? If I can get that thing, look at that. Um, that That is incredibly amazing that this thing has so perfectly matched this up until this point. Obviously, some, some differences down in here, but from a time perspective and a retrace perspective, all of it has gotten us right back to there. So is this whole moment going to provide that? I mean, it, it really could. It really could, but it, it definitely sends shivers down my spine at this moment you guys know this at a 702 retracement i'm just going to be nervous i'm going to be uncomfortable but maybe just maybe it can provide this moment for us as well and when we take a look over at the total market cap this is the stuff we've been talking about for the last several months talking about that rally prior to capitulation hitting that 4.236 and us moving our way back up and you can see where we are it's almost right back at that moment 
And with a very clean example of that type of phenomenon occurring, you can see that with Litecoin back in here, back in 2014 through 2017, there's the rally prior to capitulation. There's the 4.236. Then you can see as it got back up in here, there was a lot of volatility that showed up in this moment right in here. We have not had a lot of volatility up in here. This has been pretty much straight line up. But when we look at Litecoin kind of on a, a closer time frame to see what happened, you can see there was a pause there right before it got above the all-time high, a big break above, and then a big volatile push down. So maybe that's kind of what's coming. Maybe there's going to be a little bit of a break in the altcoin market cap and in the total market cap as Bitcoin reaches out to that 702 Fibonacci retracement level. There's a temporary big pullback that happens right at that moment, then it recovers. I don't know. That's really just kind of the, the most logical sense I can try to make on short-term time frames that maybe as Bitcoin's pushing up to the 702 altcoin market total market cap hit a new high bitcoin hits the 702 there's a big pullback in the market that happens there but then the market recovers afterwards it's kind of the the grand idea that i've been going with this whole time if you've been following for a while going through the depths of despair that we were in just a couple of months ago this has been the whole idea that i've been following along with and so far so good but with Bitcoin back at retracement levels and with the markets and the market caps getting back near the all time highs, a little bit, a little bit of shakiness seems appropriate <laughs> pretty soon. And maybe that's just me underlying uh, my underlying emotions of being nervous at this time. But at the same time, the charts do show some type of, of rocky movement that happens as we get up here. So. I'm just kind of getting getting prepared for that. And that while I'm definitely rooting for this to be the outcome for Bitcoin, all of my underlying worry and concern stems back from what has happened in the past. And in the past, there have been circumstances where you go to the 702 Fibonacci retracement level, get rejected, and that's the end. So everyone has to kind of make up their own mind on what they're going to do as this moment approaches. I'll never tell you what to do, but I'll try to at least show you the things that worry me or the things that make me excited. If we get a nice clean break through this area for Bitcoin, you better believe it. I will be ridiculously excited. But as we're underneath it and we don't have clean breakouts from it, I'm on edge. And one thing that we have talked about that has been missing from this market that has been present in each of the previous major bull runs for Bitcoin has been that as Bitcoin goes into its retrace and as Bitcoin finishes up the bull run, XRP has taken off and gone on a moon mission during that time. And we have yet to see that happen with XRP. If XRP suddenly fired into all-time highs or something like that, while I would be very excited for what is happening with XRP, I would certainly be very worried for what's happening in the market months from now. So some really big clues for me to be even more worried about Bitcoin would be if XRP fired off on a moon mission right now. I'd be thrilled, I'd be happy about XRP, but I'd be saying to myself, this has happened at the end of each of the major bull runs and has been one of the marking signals of the end of the cryptocurrency bull run. So we don't have that yet. That has been a marker of the end of the bull runs previously. And since we don't have that yet, that is something to kind of say, okay, well, th there's at least one thing that's missing from here that would be of ultimate worry. But here we go, guys. It's the big week. It looks like it's going to be our week where we're going to go test that 702 retracement. And we're going to see what happens to this market as the altcoin market tries to reclaim its previous all-time high and set a new one. And as Michael Saylor and all of these Bitcoin cyber hornets all plan to buy at the same time tomorrow here at the retracement levels. And so this is that big moment we've all been waiting for for several months is to get back to these retracements. It's exciting. It's worrying. It's everything. Altcoin market at all time high craziness so we're finally here and we'll see what the week has in store for us and i hope that you guys had a wonderful weekend i hope that you're having a nice labor day i know not everybody gets labor day off but a lot of people in the united states do get today off hopefully you get to spend that with the family hopefully you got nice weather barbecue do stuff with the family or just play video games or do whatever you want i hope that you're enjoying today if you're looking for something to do of course you can check out my website over here this is bcbacker.com this is a course that i put together where i deep dive into the previous bitcoin bull runs the different altcoin market cycles, tie them together to show how the alt seasons and when the altcoins take off in relation to Bitcoin. I talk about my personal exit plans in here. I talk a lot about mathematics and percentages. 
and I teach you how to set up your own charts and your own indicators within TradingView and CoinTrader Pro. I did recently add a market update in here, August 31st, right in there. That's available to anybody enrolled in the course and anybody who newly enrolls in the course. And you could check out all of this educational content over here on bcbacker.com. You can follow me over here on Twitter at bcbacker. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching my channel. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor, but if you ever need a pick me up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.